I'm a conscience. His conscience. I help him know what's right from wrong. Right now, I'm a very tired conscience. Because I've been awake all night trying to figure out some way to help George. He's George. And I'm him. And we're, well, you know how a conscience works. It's just about time to get up. And in a few minutes, I'll be all tied up with George for the day. But first, I'd like to ask you to come along and observe. Perhaps you'll be able to tell me how I can help George. Maybe then I can get some rest. Oh, we got to tell you. George's main trouble is he's a griper. Why do you have to get up so early just to go to school? I don't see why you have to be on time anyway. See what I mean? George is griping already. Wonder why he can't be like Betty Anderson. She's a girl we walk to school with sometimes. <laughs> Gotta keep conscience, too. Well, now, she always seems friendly and cheerful. It's about time to get up over at her house, too. Do you suppose she starts out a day the way George does? George! Oh, my gosh, he shouldn't be without me. You look in on Betty while I find George. Uh, it's just as I've always said. There's not a team today that doesn't play like a bunch of green amateurs. I, when I was playing ball, that sort of thing just didn't happen. Mom, where's my green sweater? I haven't seen it. Oh, nothing's ever where I left. You'd think that once, just once, you could put something down in this house and come back and it'd still be there. Oh, wouldn't you know it? It's starting to cloud up. I knew it. I knew it. Seven days in a week and the one day I plan to shop, it has to rain. George, will you please eat your breakfast and stop dilly-dallying around? You're going to be late for school. I'll make it on time. I'll make it. They'll probably have some dry old speaker in the assembly program this morning. They never fail. As you can see, George comes from a long line of gripers. I wonder if Betty has the same trouble with her family. Whoops, got to go. Mind if I walk to school with you? No. Hi. Hi, Betty. Hi, Betty. Hi, Betty. Hi, Betty. I hope there's a big turnout for the rally this afternoon. It's the first game. Everyone's going to be there. You're coming, aren't you, George? No, I'm not coming. We'll lose the game anyway. We always lose. Well, what's eating him? Oh, you know George. He's the biggest gripe I know. Wait a minute, George. What's 
Well, why do you suppose a swell girl like Betty would go out of her way to be nice to a wet blanket like George? Maybe we think she's so swell because she is nice to everybody, even George. Why do you suppose he's so sour on everything? Maybe it's because he never does anything. Yeah, the coach tried to get George to try for the basketball team last year. But would he do it? No, sir. Remember the first game last year? Betty and the other cheerleaders talked George into going, and boy, did he mess up the works. As soon as the team came out of the... say that just because you never made the team. That's all you know. I didn't even try out for the team. Then what right do you have to kick about how they play? George, you're a dope. All this griping hasn't made you any happier. And it's a sense it hasn't helped them. Take a look. I didn't mind our team losing so much, but with a sour apple like George around, it seemed to make it twice as and remember how we griped at each other for almost a week after the game? But George's attitude would never do. I sure don't see how he gets any fun out of life. Not only that, his griping always seems to ruin things for everyone else. Remember the day in English class when Miss Duncan made that assignment? And now that you've all read the play, how about forming into groups and acting out some of the scenes? Hey, Let's see, um, George, how would you like to be chairman of one of the groups? I'd rather not. I'd just as soon read the plays as fool around with this make-believe kid stuff. I see. Well, perhaps we'd better not take this exercise after all. Class, open your books to page 112, please. Now, why'd you have to go do that? You know it would have been fun to act out those scenes. You always gripe about school being so dull, yet you never help to make anything interesting. Take a look around you, George. You spread happiness like a blotter. George's griping sure has always I seemed to gum wonder. up the word. We're great ones to talk. Do you realize we've been doing a pretty good job of griping ourselves all this time? Yeah, I guess we'll have oh, this is it. I'll see you, Francis. You know, the day that George Foster sees the bright side of anything, he'll probably declare a school holiday. Isn't that the truth? It is pretty funny, isn't it? What? No, it's kind of silly if you ask me. Oh, George, why don't you relax and quit trying to impress everyone with how stupid you think everything is? I'm sorry, George. Come on, let's go to assembly. I suppose you want me to sit by you so people will feel sorry for you.
Now, why'd you have to go do that? Betty's just about the only friend you got left. And yet, even with her, you got to be your nasty old self and drive, drive, drive. George, if you could see yourself as others see you, I'll bet you'd change, and right away, too. It's not hard to be one of the gang. All you have to do is help out, not be a continual griper. Tell you what, why don't you go on to that assembly? Sit on by Betty. Tell her you're sorry. Oh, what's there to lose by trying? Come on, let's do it. And remember, smile. Well, there it goes. I wonder if George can really stop being the griper. Can he do anything about the griping in his home? If George could change, would the other students accept him? Does George remind you of anyone you know? What do you think?